Just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. I'm here with the big man, the big German man we just found out, Toby Rudolph. What's going on, brother? Not much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate uh, being on the show. Man, I know I know the Bloke in a Bar community is going to be frothing to have the big fella on. A character. Would you Before you came to footy, did you... You know, like, when you are you, you mm. don't sit there and go, I'm mm. a character. You're just like, That's, I'm just me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always thought of been a bit Larry growing up, I think. Yeah. Um, just sort of, you know, I've been that class clan label, didn't really listen too much in school and always sort of got found out for it. And then mm. once I got out of that environment, I just sort of found that, I don't know, I can't really put a stop on my personality. If I go to a new club, mm. always the way, when I was at South, when I was at Redcliffe, when I was at the Sharks, everyone hates me for the first two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they realise I'm actually all right. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just, it's just like I'm not being a Derek, it's just who I am. Yeah, yeah, and okay. I'm accepted by the, the group. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so true though, because like when you first get that in first impression, you're like, is he putting this on? Like, yeah, what, what's yeah, happening yeah, yeah. here? Yeah. And then you go, no, no, that's just like, he's not trying to do anything that's bad. It's mm. just who he is. Exactly. Um, and then you become such an important part of a team. Because you always need blokes like yourself that just bring the fucking NO. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, mate, preseason two. Don't, I don't want to hear that. Word. No. no. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how's it been? You know, you guys obviously you started the year relatively well. Mm. Then everything happened with Morris, mm. and then last week you just come out and you played fucking unbelievable. Yeah, firing. Finally got the performance we wanted together. I Mate, think. like it's like the. The, there was a few weeks where I was sitting there going, I just think there's been too much turmoil up top for the boys to come together. Mm. And I was like, I just don't know how they're going to get out of this. And then someone actually left a comment um, on one of the YouTube um, episodes and they were like, bro, we've got X player, X player out, X player out. And even then I was like, oh, bro, but I don't know. They, you know they've had so much turmoil. But he was 100% right. Like, you guys look fucking great on the weekend. What's it, what's it been like this year for you? Yeah, it's been like a massive... It's a roller coaster, obviously, yeah. um, to use a cliche, but started the year really well. Like you said, we had a really good preseason. We had a really mm. good, like, one of the hardest preseasons I've done. Mm. Um, and a lot of the older boys are saying the same sort of thing. Um, and then coming into round one, we beat the Dragons. Um, everything was all good, all gravy. Uh, round two, I can't remember who we lost to, but then um, it was sort of went downhill after we lost to the Roosters. Mm. I think it was round four. Mm. Um, and you had them beat. We had him beat. Mm. So it was the last like 10 minutes, Sam Walker Brilliance. Mm. So it does my head in seeing like the highlights of it. <laughs> to this day. So I just keep put on replay as well because he's like the next big thing. <laughs> anyway. So um, that happened. And then I think, I can't remember if it was the week after that or that game when, yeah, Morris got put to the sword, um, which is a bit insulting just to the players as well because it's sort of like in, in our mind was like, well, you think we're doing so badly that that's like, you don't think we're going to win the comp now. You don't think this. Mm. And everyone sort of. We we knew like we had we had whispers it was coming, but then when mm. it actually happened, it was I don't know, it was pretty hard to take a little bit, and then mm. we lost six weeks in a row after that, and mm. that was a real tough period. Like those those six weeks, I was doubting my confidence. I was speaking to boys like going like, Geez, do, we, "Do we even like belong to be here right mm. now?" Like it's just wow. it was um, some really tough conversations we had like with the staff and the players, and mm. but um, to be, to his credit, Josh Hannay did a really good job with just keeping us all positive and just letting us know that footy was the only thing that was going to get us out of it, playing mm. good footy and. Luckily, we're here now and, um, you know, two wins under the belt, so. Mate, uh, yeah, as I said, like, I I just, I couldn't see a way out of it for you because, mm. like, uh, Craig Fiskibben, I think, is going to be an incredible coach. I think he's going to be great. Um, but it was shocking that, like, I, I just, me personally, I just didn't see the reason why Morris needed to go. You know what I mean? I didn't see, like, just see the year out and then it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, let the boys yeah. say, say goodbye. Look, I understand it's a business and I'm sure, you know, you do get that too. The, they've got to make mm. tough calls. But mm. it is, it does impact the playing group when you care about the coach, you know? For sure, massively, yeah. Yeah. I think as well, like, I think from, like, I can see why they didn't let him see his year out purely because if we start winning, mm. it's because, oh, if it's Gibbons coming in and we're looking forward to that. Mm. And if we're losing, it's because, oh, well, John Morris is there and he shouldn't be there. So it's kind of a lose-lose for him, you know? Oh, Just okay, like, yeah, okay. Like, someone told me that, I can't remember who it was, someone smarter than I haven't, me. I haven't seen that angle, I haven't thought about that angle, but like, mm. so like if they start losing, then the negative press is, oh, it's because Morris is there. Yep. So they, they're kind of rather, we'll just, you know, cut cut it now. Yeah, yeah and, yeah, and go forward. Yeah, and like I, from that point of view, like still just let him do his job. Like we mm. we all loved him, you know, and mm. still do. And I think um, the thing that sort of annoyed me when I heard was that he thought he had the job after like a meeting he had with whoever it was, mm. and then twenty four hours later, boom, Fitzgibbons is in and he's out. Wow. So that was just the whole communication process for me. Mm. From what I read, I, I don't really know the ins and outs of the hierarchy at the Sharks, you know, but. Just from, from the outside looking in, that didn't seem like the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, it's 
it's so hard like when you when you know as a player you know i've got the view of a player and also i run a business now and sometimes these decisions just become so complicated it's like no right answer 100 you know and it's just like fuck. but it's 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 so good to see that you boys have um bounced back and so was how did the re-signing because you did you toured the bulldogs facility is that, yeah, is that yeah, correct? yeah did that and so how many clubs were interested and how did the re-signing with the sharks come about yeah so um i did a tour of the bulldogs um and I, ha- I heard there was interest from from other clubs here and there but mm. no real like formal offers or uh you know actual tours of any other clubs invitations mm. so um i sat down with my manager uh about three weeks ago and just said look mate look um i know that there's other clubs coming along, but Fitz Gibbons coming in. I had a chat with uh, with Craig, I think it was about a month ago, maybe a bit more than that, and just really, really liked what he was saying. He mm. was just sort of, um, I can't remember what he was saying because like what he was saying was way too smart for me to remember. <laughs> but I just remember listening to it going like, this is unreal, like this is exactly what I want. You know, yeah. this is this is what's probably going to help my footy the most. Mm. So uh, after three or four weeks went by, nothing was really happening. And I was just to my manager and just said, look, I want to stay at the Sharks. I don't want anything else. Like I don't really care about other offers and that. Like just fuck it. Like, just get it done mm. um, and then it all just sort of came to fruition and it's on the deal a week ago, two weeks ago. Mate, it's so good. Especially, you, you know, you've earned it. Like, you know, a lot of, like not that the other players haven't earned mm. it, but you've genuinely spent time in Q Cup, you know, come yeah. through the ranks, everything like that. Um, and what do you think, you know, obviously you've only had a small interaction with Craig Fitzgibbon, but what do you reckon the, the he's going to bring to the club that you really, I guess, um, excites you? I think um, a couple of things is, when I spoke, when I sat down with him, he's got a massive defense focus. Mm. And at the moment, we're leaking too many points. Mm. Um, and I've, what I've spoken to other people around him, firstly, everyone says he's an unreal bloke. He's mm. just got Legend so bloke. much knowledge. Mm. Not one person said one bad thing about him. So that's just his reputation sort of precedes him in that way, which is like always a, a big plus. Um, but I've heard he's, yeah, with, to do with the knowledge, like he's, he's, I heard he just wrestles two or three times a week himself to this day because he loves it. Wow. And the passion that he has for building better blokes mm. into and he thinks better better men make better footy players. Mm. So he wants to build you as a man first, then work on the footy after. And I was like, mm. that just sounds like that just sounds like the perfect sort of combination of my mind. And actually, um, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but like a year and a half ago or something, he just messaged me personally and said how much he loves the show. Mm. And like he's, you know, part of the roosters, doesn't need to do that. But <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. shows the the character of the bloke to say, mate, love the show, you yeah, know, yeah, it's doing yeah. really well. Like so he clearly loves footy you know what i mean like if you're listening to podcasts and that yeah. outside of footy yeah you love it especially some big nose fuckwit that did fuck all <laughs> that played 40 games doing nothing Don't you know nothing what i mean shit <laughs> as well. um so yeah i, I think he's going to be fantastic for the club so take us back to a young fella yeah. um you know obviously you south eastern seagulls junior yes um and was it always footy or did you do any other sports uh, I was actually more of a union player growing up. Oh, really? Yeah, massively. Wow. I loved it. Um, I never really watched it, though. I always watched uh, League. And I think what happened was when I was like five years old, uh, mum and I sort of watched the Roosters games. We were massive Roosters supporters um, growing up. And she just put me in the wrong code, thinking that union and league were the same code. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. So I actually played union first <laughs> until I was eight and then played both <laughs> until I was about 13. Mm. And then just union was more the path for me. Um, I uh, ended up going to Scots College when I was 16. Um, Did you get a scholarship there or? Yeah, it was, it was like a bursary, they call it. So just because I was, you know, didn't have much money, that just sort of helped out. Because I was going to say, that's a fucking ritzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an expensive school. And yeah. I saw how the other side lived and it was a very, like, massively eye-opening experience. Um, different world, eh? You just don't know world. about. Like, you, you go from, you know, when you're 15 years old, fishing for drinks at Botany, like duplex pieces of shit houses, to yeah. go into Vaucluse Mansion, six stories, DJs, dancers, caters, uh, MCs, <sighs> like it's just another level. So to see it was, was pretty cool, but- um, And also like yourself, like, you know, I'm sure you would be similar to me. Like we go from, we can't even afford to buy boots. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so yeah, these yeah. guys are having parties. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you yeah. Know, it's, it would have been in a, a massive eye opener for you. Massive, and it made me even more glad of where I came from, you know, because um, a lot of the kids sort of just took things for granted and it was mm. a bit sad, sort of sad to see. So maybe sort of really appreciate where I, where I grew up in that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah, Union was the path and I was um, at Scott's, you know, for that purpose, just to, to play rugby and get a really good education, which both definitely happened. Um, and then, I sort of changed over 
Um, do you want to go into this now, or do you have more questions about when I was a young fella? No, I mean, yeah, we, okay. I'm sort of on a roll here, but yeah, I don't know. no, 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 it's all good, bro. <laughs> we'll take us back yeah. to a young fella then. Yeah, what, what, yeah. What, was there, um, was it an easy upbringing? Was it a tough upbringing? Was it a single mother, single father? What was yeah, it like? Yeah, so I was a single mum, uh, me and my brother, mm. um, in Maroubra and the Houses. Uh, mum still lives there now, um, but no, honestly, there was not one bit of struggle in my life growing mm. up, like. Definitely some like, you know, some kids around that I used to hang out with that, you know, aren't doing too good now. Um, but really other than that, like it was, you know, a poor neighbourhood, but it was one that was like, all we did every day was just go out and play with the kids in the street mm. f- until I was, I don't know, like 13 years old. So that yep. was 10 solid years of just, you know, having fun with my mates, kicking the foot around the park, going to the shops, riding bikes around like a neighbourhood, mm. um, going to the beach um, in Maroubra and just having the time of my life really. Like I love the childhood I had. I have no like sort of... Uh, qualms, issues, whatever you want to call it. Like it was mm. just the perfect childhood for me. Yeah. Okay. And so, did you make rep teams or anything growing up? Um, for union, yeah, mm. not for league. I made like the Ranwick, which is like sort of the same as like the CS Juniors uh, rep side. Mm. The Ranwick Rugby Union uh, rep team was just like all the teams in the com. I made that. Uh, I didn't really make any more serious ones. So I was like 15, 16. Mm. Um, and then when I was 18, I made like the New South Wales Schoolboys team. We got uh, didn't make the Australian. Because we've had the shooters campaign ever, and then that was about it, but not too many really. No. Yeah. And so, at what point did you kind of start realizing, oh, fuck, like I can make a crack at this? Or was it quite late when you realized, oh, I could be a. Yeah, no, it was sort of like, it was honestly all I ever wanted to do was play footy. So, like, I used to, my single birthday wish every year since mm. I was, I can remember, was my wish was I want to be a pro footy player when I grow up. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah Far out. Birthday. So, like, yeah. I always wanted to do it. There were definitely times I doubted. Mm whether it would happen or not, mm. um, the way my career panned out. Uh, so it's just something I've always wanted to do. Like everything I did was to get better at footy. Like if yep. I was working a labouring job, it was so I could, you know, play footy afterwards and, you know, play for the 20s, play for this. Just, it was always, footy was always the focus growing up. Yep, okay. And when did it become like a reality, do you think, where you were going, okay, I've actually got the, the talent to do it, I'm in the right systems. Was it when you were at Scott's or was it a bit later? Scott's definitely helped. Mm. Scott's like put me, like without Scott's, I don't think I'm doing what I'm doing. Really? They had like just such a professional outset there, um, taught me how to train hard, taught me what it is to work hard because mm. it was a very hard like program they had there. Mm. Um, and then when I was 19, um, I, I was playing for the Waratah 20s mm. um, and I really hurt my ankle um, just in, in a scrum. I can't remember what happened, but... I really like need, nearly needed surgery and stuff, and um, they sort of said to me, uh, "Look, we're actually gonna, we can't afford any money in the budget for your physio, so you're sort of just on your own." What? Yeah, and I was like, "Well, I did it playing for you guys." Yeah, well, like, like well, I can I have some help? Yeah, yeah. So I was just sort of left on my own in the cold, and then I was working at the Coogee Pav. Um, well, no way, the yeah, Pav. Yeah, I used, to work there. I used to work there for like six months as a glassy. Wow. Yeah, it was a grouse. Like I imagine you as a glassy there. Yeah, it was good fun. Was your, good. Ghost, just, your ghost still haunts the halls, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, not from being a glassy, that's just from <laughs> other things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to like see like Mitchell Pierce, Seguiaro there with yeah. like the hottest chicks ever. And yeah. I'm just picking up their glasses going, I just want to be them guys so bad. I no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. that's crazy yeah. to think that, you know, you're sitting there picking the glasses up, seeing fucking Pierce doing his best work. <laughs> yeah. Doing his best yeah, work. Doing his best. Seguiaro. And you're going, I would love to be there. Yeah, I just wanted to be there. Just like that was so hot. Those chicks. I still remember them. I still remember them. Um, yeah, I was working. Matter of there. fact, I stalked them for the last ten years. <laughs> Matter of fact, I still love them on my phone. Um, I yeah, I was working there and ran into the twenties head coach at mm. South, who I knew from my days at Morris Page before I was at Scotts. Mm. And he just said, "Leah, look, come down. Um, we'll get your ankle taken care of. Um, we'll get you sort of in the system as soon as you're fighting thick. A lot of injuries, and mm. that was just how I made the transition from league to union, just because uh, from union to league, just because." Mm. Didn't know what else to do. So you met him at Coogee Pav while working? Well, I saw him there. I met him. He was my teacher at, at Okay, Mars. yeah. So yeah. you saw him there yeah. and you told him your situation of yeah. like, injured myself playing under 20s Waratahs. Yeah. I want a crack. And he yeah. said, mate, you know what? Yeah. We'll give you a crack. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the best thing ever that happened at Coogee Pav. I doubt that. Before really. 12 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's great. Like the Coogee Pav, it brings people together. They won't be in anymore either. They full brush me, yeah. What? I say because I'm a footy player now, they won't let me in anymore. No way. Like, word for word is what they said. Wow, because mm. like some clubs do not let footy players into the into the. Mm. That's crazy. So it's kind of oh, how much you so upset about it, mate. Like, your dreams said, and nightmares have been shattered, but they've also been made at the Coogee Pav. I just want to be back there. <laughs> I miss the place so you much. want to take advantage of the fact that you finally made it back to playing NRL. 
I haven't been there since I've been an NRL player. Like, <laughs> get me in there now. Wow, that's fucking... I mean, what a journey. You see PC, you see the, like... Okay, so when you go to Rabbitohs, did mm. you go into the 20 squad? Yeah, yeah. I was 19, playing a year up in the 20s, just straight in there. Mm. No affiliation with first grade or anything. Um, I think I... I only played like, because I went halfway through the year, I mm. uh, only played about, I don't know, eight or nine games, not too many. Mm. Um, then going to the next year, I stayed again. Mm. Um, I actually ended up making more money playing for like the local reserve grade park footy team. No way. The Seagulls, because I was in like a hundred bucks to win, 200 bucks a loss. We lost every game we played. <laughs> um, and I got 150 uh, for every man of the match I won mm. in the Seagulls. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of spewing as well because the boys always expected to shout because mm. as, as you do, but that was my money. That was my income for the week was like that man of the match award. No so never way. Never shouted beers, shit go. <laughs> but yeah, sorry boys if you're seeing this. Um, <laughs> tough times, tough no, times. You know, no, you know. Um, and then, so what, you were just stinging for the man of the match because that's what survo- you were surviving on. Yeah, like because uh, I was labouring then um, doing rubbish removals uh, yep. for this company and when I wasn't like called into work, I didn't have any money. Yeah. And there were times where I wasn't called into work for, you know, like a week, two weeks at a time. So, mm. That was how I paid for it. Right. How many men matches did you get? Do you remember? Like six or seven. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it was a crowd. I'll tell you what, the incentive works. Mate, it works. I mate, imagine did it in NRL. How <laughs> oh, yeah, it would be. yeah. You get you get fifty grand a man in the match or something. Mm. Blokes be playing in their skin. Out of their skin. The origin team look very different, I reckon. <laughs> um, so okay, so you get into that twenty squad. Was it did you immediately make the twenties team or did it take a while to make the twenties team? Yeah, it just took like oh, I don't know how long, but like a maybe like a month or two, like even more than that maybe. Cause mm. I I just thought when I left, I left playing league when I was like 13. Mm. And I just thought it was the same. Like you just run, you tackle, like yeah. play the ball, but it's there's this wrestle and there's this underhook. And mm. then now there's four men, there's three men. I had no idea what any of that meant. So I yeah. was just like bluffing my way through. Mm. I didn't really know until the following year in twenties, what was going on. Um, so yeah, probably like, I think I made my debut against the Titans in twenties. I've probably been there for like, yeah, like six, seven weeks. Mm. And then going into the next year, I wanted to give it a red hot crack. So I went to uh, went to Thailand um, uh, with my brother and a few other boys mm. for a training camp. Literally went there just to train. Yep. Um, came back and was just like so fit, ridiculously fit. All the preseason drills, I was just killing it. Like uh, skills are still a bit like woeful, but it didn't really matter. Mm. Um, and then played like four games, grew my hair out, played like four games, uh, got a first rate gig yeah. for the following year. Then I cut my hair into a mullet. Then McGuire told me to cut the mullet. Then I played shit for the rest of that year. <laughs> I played shit the following year. Yeah. Um, moved to Redcliffe. Was told they don't want me there. Yeah. Grew my hair back, and then the rest is history. I grew my hair back, and so it's all in the hair. It's all in the hair. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Like, that's wow. why. It's the reason I keep it. Okay, so so take us back to you get called into that first grade squad. Do you yeah. remember your first day rocking up, seeing the boys and that? Yeah, it was so awkward. So I walked in um, to. We were, we were training at Kujovel that day. Yeah. So I was sitting in this cafe, um, and all the boys were just sitting there. And I just sort of scooched right in because I just didn't want to be standing up. Yeah. And there was like one seat in the middle of like all these boys. There was like, I think Sam Burgess, Greg Inglis, uh, Bryson Goodwin. And I just like scooched in like, and was like sitting like this with them. And they were like, who the fuck is this loser? Um, it's probably another big reason why they didn't like me at the start. And then yeah, trained with them. And I did like three days a week sort of yeah. um, here and there. And But towards the back end of the year, I just like lost all confidence, was playing really crap for 20s. I played like one reserve grade game for re- uh, round three, I think, mm. made like the reserve grade debut when I was 19. Mm. And then, um, when I was 20, sorry. And then didn't play wrestling in that year. I played so bad. Really? I had a full Barry Crocker. Yeah. Um, didn't get recalled in, was like playing off the bench in 20 the rest of the year, so I had confidence was shot again. Yeah, yeah. And then the following year for first grade was sort of like the exact same as the year before. Yeah, okay. Which is bad. And were you just struck, like, were you struggling for confidence because like I'm assuming Madge is such a, a tough, coach yeah was it hard for you to fit into the system or was what was it was a confidence what was it you know if if i knew what it was i would have fixed it i I actually don't know like um madge was great i got on well with madge he was unreal all i had the best year of my life off the field that year like all the boys were just unreal yeah so welcoming um Mm. jason clark was a nice human being ever sam tom george greg sato um damien cook like literally got on like a house on fire of such a tight group of lads but didn't really play that well. They didn't play that well that year either. Yeah, okay. And then because that was um, Sammy moved on, wasn't it? Sammy, um, like Madge was moved on and Seabolt yes, was over. Yeah, that was that year. Yeah, that was that end of that year. Was yeah. that when that happened? So, okay. Um, I don't really know what will happen that way. Just yeah, mm. I, I was off the bench for Reggie's the entire year. Barely mm. got a start. 
didn't get to play many minutes. Um, and then yeah, at the end, they were like, yeah, we don't have a spot here for you next year. Yeah. And so did you have a manager or anything? Yeah, yeah I had a manager. And so manager. when so you've got no you've got no spot at the Rabbitohs, mm. and you spoke to your manager, and your manager's like, look, no one's keen. Yeah, like he, I think he. T- I said to him before I even asked because I knew no one would be. because yeah. I was just off the bench for Reggie the whole year. Mm. I was like, look, I want to go to to Redcliffe. I want to mm. go to the Queensland Cup because there were two boys, uh, Anthony Cherrington and uh, a bloke called Brett Greinke. They were mm. they were both from the Q Cup. Anthony Cherrington had just uh, come from Redcliffe for the year before and said like it's an unreal system. It's a great club. Q Cup's like it's kind of like first rate over there. People mm. actually care about it. Mm. Whereas this Wells Cup. People don't really seem to give a shit. Yeah, it's very different. It's very, very different. Mm. Um, so he said, get over there. And with the way the system works as well, how the Broncos have like four different feeder clubs. Mm. If you get a starting spot, you'll be able to hold one. Whereas in the Wales Cup, only one team to one reserve grade team. Mm. So top manager wanted to do that. Said Redcliffe for Kane. I was the lowest paid player at Redcliffe. The manager mm. still calls me to this day and says, I can't believe how cheap we got you for. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, just started playing really well. Just sort yeah. of thought, um, you've moved up there now. I was mm. living there and... Just sort of thought if every time you get the ball, every time you make a tackle, just give it everything and because mm. you didn't move here for no reason. Yeah, that's great. So you got there and it was kind of like, what, did it feel like a last chance kind of thing? Yeah. Like yeah. I, I sort of I sort of said to myself, if I'm not starting in this team you know, in the first few weeks, I'm going back home. Really? Like so you were, gave it everything? Yeah, there was like, there's no sort of stone on turn. I was like working really hard, training really hard. Mm. Um, what were you doing for work up there? I had like three different jobs. They all, well, two of them sucked so bad. I, <laughs> I was... um. The first one was landscaper. Yeah. Coming off of your first grade where you don't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> was torture. That was like <laughs> one of the hardest jobs I've ever done. And I didn't get fired, but work just ran out, which I was more than stoked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, for one month, worst job I've ever had in my life was a HelloFresh knock on door, like trying to get people to sell. No. Trying to like, get people to sign up to deliveries for HelloFresh. Oh. I had to like say this line like, oh, but you weren't expecting a good looking rooster in an apron. And the oh. door just slammed in my face. All day, every day for a month straight. There was one month where I made 50 bucks for the whole, oh, sorry, one week where I made 50 bucks for the whole week. So I had one sale the whole week. Wow, and you would have seen yeah. what, 200, 100 doors, 200 doors? A day. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow, yeah. yeah, and that was, that was just, I was like, no, nah, I get it. Gotta get the fuck out of this place. And like, you're just constantly dealing with rejection. Yeah, like, like no one wants, like, if someone goes to your door, what are you doing? You beat it, mate. Like, yeah, I'm trying to chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, oh, this is my home. home. Exactly. Should be come to my home. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I actually live in a private estate covered, we have an army at the front. We shoot anyone that comes on the lawn. That's but so back in the day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? It's fucking kind of just, you see the red Gosh. dot on his head. Um, <laughs> mate, that's, that's, um, did you, like, Maybe it sounds cliche and like all the entrepreneur books would say it, but yeah. did you actually learn a lot being rejected that much? Oh, well, well, not really. It just was no, shit. No, nah, it was just shit. <laughs> I didn't want a fucking thing. I just wanted to get out of there. So like, I think it was one of the guys there, um, his mate had was working there before, went to this like truck driving company. Mm. Um, I gave them a call. They brushed me at the start. Then mm. someone got fired that day and then they called me and were like, yeah, we can take you on. Yeah. And then I was just delivering, it was the best job ever. I was delivering like drinks, food, milk, mm. um, sort of like different like lollies, like everything to mm. um, cafes and schools and stuff. So just cruise around talking to people? Cruise around talking to people, getting paid an hourly rate. Yep. Um, I'd have to get up at like 4.30 in the morning, which sort of sucked, but it was not very hard work. It was just like, mm. you know, Once you get used to it, you're kind of <laughs> used to that. Into routine. Yeah. Yep. It was sweet. The only drama was I live 50 minutes from training. So like I'd oh, have to sort of yuck. get up. I'd probably get home at like 10, smash dinner and just like... Go to bed as I can and yeah, zonk out. But it was so cruisy. I used to take like four or five food breaks a day, go to Woolworths, play my music in the truck, and mm. it was just cruisy as. Yeah. I always, um, when I was uh, an elect- well, starting to be an electrician, I always loved the days where they were like, oh, we need you to drive to Maroolan, which is about two and a half hours away, yeah. and back. <laughs> and I'm like, that's sick. Like, just bang the radio on, yeah, podcast, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. drive, and then yeah. drive back. That was my whole job. Yeah. Just driving. It was the best. And just cruising. Yeah. You, you can have whatever you want on the radio. Like, 100%. You're only there yourself. No one's watching you. Like, yeah. Yeah. work and do stuff yeah there was even like every second monday i used to get to go to Stradbroke island because what? yeah because they used to like they were one of their clients yeah there was like eight cafes there that needed like lollies and milk and all this shit i just said before mm. um so i used to get there i used to get up at 3 30 for that get that barge over at like five in the morning yeah uh i would leave at like two in the afternoon but there was eight cafes which is nothing so i literally would was done in an hour and i would just beach hop all day wow and it was like that That's was sick so every second monday was pretty much a day off yeah pretty much an rdo over it 100%. Just get through it. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, you're playing good footy um, at the, the Dolphins. Yeah. And did you 
sign with Cronulla from the Dolphins or did you sign with Newtown from the Dolphins? No, with Cronulla. With Cronulla. Yeah. Okay, so how did that come? Did you start hearing whispers? Did you have, still have a manager at the time? So yeah, had the same one the whole time. Okay. Um, so then um, I think it was about two weeks before the final series. Mm. Um, I was actually going to go to Tweed Heads afterwards uh, purely because the Broncos said that they'd take me on for a preseason. Oh, really? But they wouldn't take me on for um, anything more than that. There was like no top 30 spots available or okay. anything. Okay, so train and trial. Uh, train and trial, but like no op- no real chance to get signed at all with anything. So it was just just a preseason. That was it. What? Yeah, that was like that. I was like, if I do really well, can yeah, I? Yeah, can I get a crack? Nah, nothing. I was like, no, nah, we're already full. I was like, okay, sweet. So then um, Garth Brennan called me when he was at the Gold Coast, and he yeah. said, yeah, look, if you come across, you do really well. There's definitely a spot open for you. Yeah, sweet. So then I signed with Tweed, um, and then yeah, like I think it was like two weeks before the final started. Uh, Grant Jones was at the Sharks, the f- recruitment manager there, who knew from South. He gave me a call and said, we're really keen to get you across. Mm. Uh, before we played the Burley Bears, I think in like one of the prelims, I went down, we had the week off because we came first and had the um, like the week off. And mm. So I went down to Cronulla, like met everyone, met Flano, met um, Andrew Gray, all like the, the big sort of uh, big boppers that were there at the time. And then just signed the contract on the day. Um, mm. I didn't know I was going, I thought I was just going there to meet people. I didn't know that the contract was happening. Oh, like really? That. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I was going to meet everyone. Then the contract was in front of me. Was, was it just like, a minimum? Uh, so the first year was... Um, development mm. and then the following year was I think it was like so it was like 60k like 75k like yeah okay sort of like a, um, so first pr- year. basically minimum like yeah lower than minimum minimum was like 110 so I was on like oh so you're on a you were outside the top 25 well now it's top 30 okay yeah, yeah, so yeah, you were so 30, one, 31 to 35 yeah yeah yeah. Oh, okay so you were still still way away from first grade way away wow yeah. so you go down um, so you move back down to what was, the, what, what was the feeling like um, in the decision-making process of like, you kind of had a chance at the Titans mm. to move, did you want to move back to Sydney? No, it's purely because um, I was like with Tweed, mm. training with the Titans and the, like a possibility of uh, getting signed up. Yeah. Whereas with the Sharks, it was with the Sharks and a two-year deal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was with, that and so there was, was there anyone else interested or the Sharks just, the you Sharks, know, that was it. That's crazy. So you signed the deal, you get back down to Sydney, was it, um, was it nerve-wracking rock, walking back up to that first day of training again in the first grade oh, again? Because so you'd been scared. away from it, you know? I was so scared. Um, <laughs> especially, like, so I, I came back injured. Mm. I did my ACL in, like, the in-trust grand final. Oh, fuck. Um, against the Bulldogs in the first, like, 15 minutes. Mm. That was, like, really hard. That was, like, because I had all these plans to go travelling afterwards as well, and I was going to the Sharks, and I was, like, in good form. <laughs> and then come to the training, and, yeah, had, like, a, a bung-up knee. Uh, I got surgery... Like two weeks after my first day because mm. it was sort of so late before they started. Mm. Um, and then I was on the outer like for six months. I'm sweating. No one talked to me for six months. Really? No one liked me. It was <laughs> fucking so hard. Like <laughs> I would just pray for like the time to go home, get in the car and drive home and just yep. go with the mum and the dog. Yeah. Um, and then it was literally after the, like the first game I played for Newtown. Went out in the piss with the, uh, the boys at Northies afterwards. And yeah. then from then on it was just... All good. It's always the beers. You need to get on the beers. <laughs> you need to get on the beers all the time. Yes, hundred percent. Let's go. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, like, you signed. Did, so you made the. You were in the grand final the year before uh, for Tweed, for Redcliffe, for Redcliffe. Yeah. yeah and did yeah. you just win that? No, we got palms. So we had like. So you um, won Q Cup though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, won Q Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you won Q Cup, and then the following year, did you win New South Wales Cup? Yeah. So that was the joke with the whole back to back that you had with Gal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got yeah the whole uh, Clive Churchill stitch yep. up. Yeah. So I got the Clive Churchill in the um in the Q Cup Grand Final. The Clive Churchill equivalent. Yeah, yeah Duncan yeah. Hall. Duncan Hall. I don't like calling Duncan Hall. Clive Churchill's better. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, the man of the match in the New South Wales in trust super against yep. the Queensland team. Mate, that's back to back. Back to back, Clive, baby. <laughs> Has anyone ever done that? No, surely not. I'm a reserve grade immortal. I must be. I've got to be on the wall somewhere. <laughs> this is your picture, just like you know, like an old school suit. Give it to me now. Um, okay. So, so when you do, you, when you get down, and you, that first six months you're struggling. Yeah. Um, when you did come back to start to play footy, were you playing good footy? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I just sort of, I, I was a really hard sort of uh, rehab period. Mm. Uh, I was getting flogged every day. Yeah. And I wasn't used to that sort of running again, like a first grade sort of system. Mm. Um, but just came back fighting fit. And just, yeah, things just sort of happened around me and just um, had a few good weeks. And then I only started my first game, I think the week before the grand final, mm. uh, the first grand final. And then played all right in that and then played pretty good in the... Um, so your first game back from this, essentially a season-ending injury mm. was the semis. No, that was the first time I started, like in the, in the starting team, I mean, like I was on oh, the bench okay, for, yeah, for, okay, for a few yep, weeks. Right. My first game back was Ron Massey. Yeah, like, wow. Yeah, yeah. So you went to Ron Massey all the way to, to grand final? Yep. Wow, yeah, yeah, far yeah. out. Okay, yeah. so... Um, 
did you as you were playing more games were you slowly getting confident and like well i'm mixing it with new south wales cup the yeah. best in the state exactly that was happening like i went to run massey um I was the most nervous I've ever been for a game to this day. The Ron Massey one? The Ron Massey one, because like it was my first game back after the, the knee injury was bad. Like it really rattled me. Well, so it was an ACL? It was ACL, MCL, meniscus, like the trifecta. Full Gonskis. Yeah, full Gonskis. Um, so I uh, was like just shitting bricks for the whole week leading up to it. Mm. And then went out there and um, went all right. Like, you know, you'd hope so against like my Massey blokes. Yeah. No <laughs> um, if you're not telling them up, like, what are yeah, you doing? Just give dramas. it away. You're in some dramas. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, the, the uh, Newtown coach saw me play, put me in the team the next week. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, just as every week went by, I just sort of kept playing better and better. And um, the boys started liking me more and more, and that felt really good. And then yeah. I started getting heaps of friends, and it was mad. So yeah. just the culmination of things, I think. Yeah, mate, it's, um, it's funny how, like, everything – it's it's very unusual that like off the field is shit and on the field is good or on the field is good. You yeah, know what I mean? 100%, um, 100%. And so wh what were the conversations like with Cronulla? Were they happy with your progress that year? Yeah, I didn't really speak to Bomber. Like I spoke to him a little bit here and there. Mm. The main chat we had was Mad Monday, shock. Um, <laughs> We were at the Coogee Pav again. Mate, <laughs> glorious yeah. place. It's oh, a glorious oh, place. Oh, let me back in. <laughs> um, so we were at the Coogee Pav and yep. just, um, I was after... Um, I think it was actually just before our grand final, it was after the Sharks got knocked out. Mm. Um, and he was just sort of saying to me, like, mate, like, you, if you just have a great preseason, if you don't fuck up, if you just sort of put your head down and work hard, you can have a 10-year career. Mm. And that was like when I was like, fuck, this, this, this could be it. That was mm. the first sort of conversation when I was like, I could achieve the dream, get the mm. debut. Um, but yeah, before that, it was just sort of like little conversations here and there, but that yeah, was the main one. main one. Um, and so the grand final uh, for Newtown, yeah. you're a part of the great grand final the great Magulius. Uh, Magulius, bro the great yeah, Magulius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get him on first grade i want him playing more first grade he's been in the team the last few weeks yeah he missed out last week was the 80th man I Mate, think. get the great Magulius in there <laughs> we need more Magulius. Yeah. i just want to hear ray warren i want to yeah. see Magulius make a break and i want to hear ray warren go Magulius. <laughs> it would be, be the dream mate. beautiful It'd be the dream. um so walk us through that grand final so mm. Is it down by four, were you? Yeah, well, it was like 16-2 at half time. Yep. Until the last 20 minutes, it was 16-2. Mm. And then one try we scored, like things started going our way. Yep. Another try we scored. Um, and then it was 16-14 with a kick to come. And mm. then Braden Trindle missed it from the sideline. Um, remind him of that? Do you remind him of that every day? I haven't, but I really should, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Let's really get into him about him. Um, so 16-14. Um, we were down by two points with... Fuck, I think it was like... Like two minutes to go, mm. and then they got the ball. Like we were like attacking their line, and then uh, we threw an intercept to them with like a minute ten seconds left to go. We go, this is that's it. Like we've yeah. lost. Yeah. Um, and then the thing that turned around, Blake, Blake Braley kick pressure Jamal Fogarty. Mm. Uh, instead of kicking it out, he got tackled. We had like fifteen seconds left. Scott Ronson went for a hit up. Yeah. Um, five seconds to go. McGuire's got the ball, chip kick. Jackson Ferris somehow caught it out of like. A swarm of early players around him, yeah. and the greatest game I've, been, I've ever been a part of. Wow, it was, it was a crazy finish. I just remember yeah. seeing it everywhere on social <laughs> yeah, media, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Um, and so you won the player of the match for that game. Yeah, that was the second club church. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you've had a career. So you yeah. haven't even played NRL yet, and you've had a fucking better career I than know, most NRL that's players. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no one gave me the respect. It was, it was oh, it's fucking great. Mm. Um, okay, so then. So that year happens, you have the chat with, with Bomber, mm. and that's when you're going, fuck, like, yeah, this could be I'm going to rip thing. in here. So that next preseason, did you just fucking... I went to Thailand again. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. For, for training, though, for yeah, training. Yeah, for training. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, both, but mainly training. I <laughs> uh, came back, again, like, fighting fit, was, like, winning yo-yo tests and was mm. um, just sort of, yeah, like, put my best foot forward for it. And then I think it was uh, around Christmas time, Matt Pryor, we found out he was going to England. Yeah. And then, like, boys come up to me going, like, Toby, like, this could be a shot. Like, mm. this, this could... I remember distinctly Braden Newelli going, like, man, like, if, if Boogs isn't fit, like, uh, Jason Bakuya, like, you could be in here. And I was like, oh, yeah. fuck, I know, like, this this really could be it. I was telling my family, like, you know, this just, you know, this could be the one. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, round one came around um, and Bomber had the team out in front of everyone. Yeah. Like, one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. 16, making his NRL debut, Toby Rudolph. And it was like, <sighs> bang, like... Yes, I can't describe the moment. I yeah. really can't. Just ecstasy, pure like jubilation. Just yeah. it was yeah, one of the greatest sort of 
a good memory that I have to this yeah, day. Absolutely. And in that period, was there ever a time where you're like, I'm giving this up. Like, I'm not I'm not good enough to play in a role. I just need to fucking stop chasing dreams. All the time. Yeah. All the time. That, that those twenties years, um, when I cut my hair, not that I had anything to do with it, but, when I, <laughs> but that that time I was like, yeah. um, you know, are the Sharks, uh, sorry, as, are the Seahawks going to like pull this contract they offered me? Mm. Well, I literally thought they were just going to see how shit I was going mm. and just be like, yeah, you're not here next year anyway, like at all. Like uh, just, I had this not in my pay mindset. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, just not pay me or just like somehow we'll just not be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there was definitely doubts along the way. Yeah. Uh, it was all sort of changed at Redcliffe when um, mm. I moved away from home and um, just moved there for one particular reason. Yeah. Um, that was just, yeah, I remember I spoke to the coach after round one, I was on the bench. And I said to him, Adam Mogg used to play at Canberra back yeah. in the day, Origin player. Mate, um, one of the great Origin yeah, games. Know, one yeah, of the great yeah, Origin yeah, games. Yeah, he reminded us of it all the time as well. <laughs> um, so I said to him after round one, I was like, mate, look, I didn't move here to be off the bench. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll, I moved here to start, you know. Mm. I didn't even play that good mm. um, in round one. And then round two, I get this, the, um, the starting spot. Mum, my uncle, my auntie, uh, and a couple of mates flew up from uh, Sydney and. I was just like, they're here, just starting. This is what you came here to do, and just had a blinder of a game. Um, and then from then on, that was just what sort of that was like the catalyst, the start of the journey, kind that of. That was the start of the journey. That's yep. what I always tell my mum that as well. Yep. Yeah, that was the start. It's crazy, it's crazy. Have these like these moments, and they yeah, change yeah. your whole life, bro. Yeah, you don't realize it at the time. But looking back, it's just clear as day. Um, okay, so the debut, it's against the Rabbitohs. Yeah. How did that feel? Looking across, mm. going on the club that you know didn't want me, which is sweet, you know, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, but yeah, still, yeah. at the same time, you're like. I'm yeah, here now. <laughs> yeah. Look at me now. Yeah, um, that was the best. Like it was, it was so weird because I was playing out like my first hit up and really dropped it, but uh, everyone was just sort of saying along the way, like I'd make a tackle and Damien Cook would say, "Congratulations, bro, good on you." Like, oh, really? Man. In the tackle? Yeah, I tackle, I tackle Cody Walker. Bro, good, good for you, way. Fuck, I'm so stoked for you, you know. That's Tom sick. Burgess, Cam, Liam Knight. Like everyone was just, it was, I was so weird. I was like, "Don't say this." I'm trying to. Like, so you out. were getting congratulated by each person tackling you on your debut. It was that weird. That's, it was mad. It that's was awesome. Mad. That's yeah, so good. No, I was stoked. Wholesome. Did you yeah. bump any of them though? Did you like? Uh, I suplexed Tommy B. I uh, did ya? I suplexed him. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, nah, not really. I, oh, actually, Cody, um, he, he still tells me to this day, I've run into him and he put me on my back and just laughed in my face as loud as he could. <laughs> and still tells me about it to this day. So oh, he, mate. He yeah. does, like, he's not the biggest boy. Nah, but he, he's good technique. He's, he's good, good technique. technique. He's yeah. such a good footy player. Such yeah, a fucking good footy player. He's a weapon. Um, and legend of bloke too. Correct. So, so did you win that game? Victory? Nah, nah, I've lost twice to them now, which is unreal. Thanks for Really? I mean, it's all your fault, clearly. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what else do you remember from that game? You, and, you know, running off or any advice that was given to you by senior players? Well, not really advice. The biggest thing I remember was before the game, uh, my mum and my brother and my auntie coming in to give me the jersey. Yeah. And mum started tearing up and, and I was no. on the verge. Yeah. I was that close. You don't uh, want to be crying in front of the boys. No, not one bit, not one bit. <laughs> so like that was that was my biggest memory was just like yeah. looking at mum, looking at my brother. Brother's always been a diehard Seahawks fan as well. Yeah. And just like looking at him going like, fuck, this is it. Like, we did it. You we know, fucking did it. We did it. Like, yeah. That was, that's my biggest memory from that. Like, um, hey. Was Gal at the club when you were at the, at the, the it, Sharks? It was there, but it was my during my ACL year. Okay. So I didn't really. Didn't I didn't get to. We, 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 we're, we're good mates still. And like, yeah. we got to know each other just because I just always would, you know. Pester him. Pester him and get my cock out in front of him. He loved it. And that, so, um, I mean, that's always going to bring you together. 100%. Nudity. <laughs> nudity and beers. Those two things. Came into this world nude. Yeah. You're going to go nude. <laughs> Show it. Like, how hard is it? So, now nah, we got on you really well. But yeah, we, I haven't said to him, like, um, I think it was my Monday again, like, fuck, didn't get to play with you. He's like, mm. you know, I know. So it, it would have been really nice, but we still, yeah, we're good mates still. So yeah. it's all right. Did you learn a lot from him seeing what it really takes to be one of the best in the game for a long period of time, training wise? Oh. He's he's an animal that bloke. Yeah. Like he doesn't he doesn't stop. And I wouldn't say the biggest things he just taught me was just like he's just always a, a need to listen to. And I'm, I'm trying to sort of be that to other people as well. And mm. I always message him like, you know, how am I going to be like the best thirteen in the comp next year after this? And mm. give me all these reasons. And just like would just always like, he's just he's just really smart as well. Mm. So he's just a big help in those sort of ways more mm. than um like, yeah he's just he's been playing for for twenty years and Absolutely. Origin for you know fifteen captaining for this and that and. So he's just, he's kind of just like a wealth of knowledge mm. that I just can tap into at any time. And, and yeah. I think with a guy like Gal, because, you know, the origin rivalry and him being a New South Welshman, um, he doesn't actually get appreciated in the fact that he was the toughest of already tough people. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 if you yeah. play first grade, you're already tough. Yeah. But he was tougher than anyone else. Yeah. 
And also, he played at the highest level for, mm. for, you know, he was one of the best forwards in the comp for a very long period of time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, I think that he's, uh, even when he retired, I was like, mate, such a massive, like, it's like losing, and I know people, it's like the Cowboys losing, losing Thurston. And, 100%. And people don't actually understand, that's, he's the heart and soul of the Sharks, yeah. just like Thurston was the heart and soul of the Cowboys. Yeah, 100%. Like, um it was a massive. It was. It just felt like an an, an end of days when he sort of left because he was sort of the last of like the Luke Lewis's, the, mm. the Chris Harringtons, and that. Mm. Um, but like it didn't go unnoticed that sort of what he did for the club. Like yeah. we call him the greatest shark ever because he, he is. Yeah. Um, most games for the club, most captaincies, I'm pretty sure. Mm. So got that premiership. Got that premiership in the end. Yeah. yeah. Porsche lights came out. Yeah. Uh, went out. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, and he's still involved with the club now. He's still a coach with Luke Lewis. So like you know. We got the most ridiculous coaching staff because you got if you're a middle forward, um, you got Galen who played that many origins. If you're an edge or a winger or a center or whatever, you got Luke Lewis who can tell you how to play an edge. So good. So like, it's it's unreal to have those sort of blokes around you. It just makes yep. you want to play harder. Absolutely. And a guy like Luke Lewis, man, I got. He's another guy that if he was a Queenslander, he mm. would be considered like. God. I mean, he already is considered incredible, but you know what yeah, I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. he was—he's one of the best utility. Like, he's not a utility, but he is because he can play fucking yeah, anywhere. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. one of the best of all time. Yeah, like he is mm. fucking incredible. So tough, and also mm. he never played a bad game. <laughs> no, never. You wouldn't, you wouldn't like be able to find him, would you? No, nah, you, you literally couldn't. Um, Grass rig too. Um, yeah, fucking shred out of his shred mind, out, which is yeah. the most important thing out of everything we yeah, just said. Yeah, no, brush everything else. Yeah. He is a shredded hunk. <laughs> shredded ass. Yeah. Cronulla's finest. Yeah. Um, okay, so you make your debut, and then did you continue to play the rest of the year, or did you go back to Q, uh, New Zealand? Yeah, no, game? no, I played, I played every game bar one. Um, it was round 20 with the whole COVID shit going on. Round 20 against the, the Raiders. Uh, we were playing them the following week in the finals, mm. so they sort of fielded like, Six or seven non-first grades. We did the same. I got a rest because I had bad shoulders. Mm. So I played every other game other than that. Mm, okay. Yeah. And so did you feel like, okay, I'm a first grader now? Or did, were you still kind of like imposter syndrome? Like, oh, fuck, I don't really feel like I'm there. Exactly that. Yeah. Like I, it was just every week I'd get to the, get to the game, the mindset would be, um, this is the game you're going to fuck it all up. Mm. This is the game where you're just going to go to war, to go to shit, you're going to make 10 errors, you're never going to play again. Mm. Uh, it probably only started like, uh, around two or three this year, that that went out the door, yeah. and I was like, "This is this is where you belong now." Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, I never heard that before. But that's perfectly a perfect way to describe it. Yeah. Imposter syndrome. Well, it's yeah. it's something everyone everyone suffers. It's like even me, like I own the company now, I run it, mm. but I don't feel mm. like I feel like I'm an imposter. I don't feel like I'm qualified for that because yeah, yeah. the idea that I've created in my mind of what that person should feel or be yeah, 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 yeah. isn't actually. Real. Is that why you got the goatee? Because it's like more business. Yeah, stuff. absolutely. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like my penis, but on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so this <laughs> looks great. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Oh, yeah, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. But in saying that, you can't make this fucking mug any uglier. So nah, fuck it. Who well, cares? Just hide more of it in your Mate, sleep. And if you've got a cock on your face, you're always going to win. Yeah, if you can yeah, literally mate. get walk around the streets with a penis on your face and not mm. get thrown away in jail, mm. that's a win. That's a win out of the <laughs> gate. Okay. So what what actually position do you prefer, prop or lock? Um, there's no difference anymore. Yeah, true, <laughs> there's true. no difference anymore. Like, yeah. uh, the only difference is where you sort of stand in the kickoff. Um, and maybe a little bit of ball playing. A little bit of ball playing, but like, I'm not a ball playing lock. Mm. Like, I'm just a running, like, tips there if I need it, but I'm more just sort of up and down and yep. not much footwork. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not playing first grade. I don't know what's going on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I suck. But yeah. Matter of fact, call the Sharks, cancel the contract. <laughs> yeah, get me cancel out of the contract. There. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what, also, what's um, any pranks that have been pulled on, like a Gallon or a Luke Lewis, or any pranks in the boys? Because I'm sure the Sharkies <laughs> boys, there's a lot going on there. I've only got one that I can remember, but I did it to Luke Lewis. Yeah. Um, he drives a scooter around with a number plate Louis, mm. and um, I he let, like left, left his bag on the scooter one day, and all I did was just take all the shit out of it, turn it inside out, put it on the scooter. I got the video on my phone. Yeah. And it's just him like looking at his bag going like, what the fuck's this? And then turns around and just throws a bag at my car. <laughs> and he's like, you fucking idiot. And I heard like it, Louis the, the king of pranks. Really? And he was going to like take a tire off my car and like he was going to, like, I don't know. They got in your head. Yeah, I got, but nothing happened. It was nothing. all good. No dramas. So they've just rattled you. They, the, it's actually worse than the prank because you've been wigging out about it. Yeah, I was scared for a few <laughs> weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, was it a few a weeks ago I saw like they someone got caught on camera moving someone's car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Who was that? Was, I think it was Roy's Hunt moved Ronaldo's, Montalo's car. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know where he moved it to. I can't really remember what happened, but like he was looking for it for like an hour or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then yeah, they, they got the CCTV footage. Uh, Fafita got it yeah. from the the groundsman. I didn't know he was like mates of them, but yeah, yeah, got it off them and 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 snitched. And snitched on him. Yeah. Fafita, eh? Fafita's a snitch. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> mate. Um, okay, so coming into this year, was it more about you know? Yes, I'm a first grader, but now I want to impact games. You know, I want to be an impactful player. Yeah, yeah, like, I'll, I'll be honest, like, I, I had aspirations for the Origin this year and mm. um, didn't quite get there. Uh, you know, I know, I sort of just defence and this and that. I, go, I talked to my coaches about why I'm not there yet. Um, I, thought, I thought it'd be easier than what it is, but it actually turns out it's really hard for Origin. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I did, yeah, more impact in games, just a bit more consistent. Um, I had a pretty more, poor on a form in the middle of the year, I feel. Um, but yeah, just like want to be a bit of a forward leader. Just I don't really lead with my words, more with my actions. Um, mm. Just trying to do that. Just trying to be a player that people want to play with is really the goal. Mm. And uh, so this year we also had the, your first ever controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah first yeah, ever yeah, controversy. Yeah. What was um, you know obviously it was a joke, but you yeah. know in saying that all sorts of people watch the show, so therefore mm. you've got to be mindful of that. Yeah. What was it like going through? A big controversy like that. Oh, sweet ass. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No dramas. No, <laughs> no, no um, dramas. Mum was asking me like, "You okay? You okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, like it's, it's like nothing. It's fine." Yeah. Um, it was a bit. It was like I, I haven't met one person, like one anyone who was like, "Oh, you, you probably need to apologise for that. You, you shouldn't have said that sort of thing face to face." No one said that to me. Everyone yeah, sort of yeah. said, "Mums, aunties, like kids, like you name it." They've all just gone. That was the best thing I ever saw. That was mm. so funny and that. Uh, but yeah, look, it's, it is 2021 and you do have to respect everyone these days. And it's, you know, I do think it's political correctness gone mad in my opinion. Um, you know, people just can't take a joke these days anymore. Mm. And um, yeah, so it's, it was a bit eye opening and, you know, a bit of like a reality check, you might say. Mm. But I still want to speak my mind. Um, mm. you know, I, there was no in intention to, you know, offend anyone. Mm. But in a way, I was kind of offended that people were offended. So. Mm. You know, what about my fans? Yeah, yeah. And also, like, what about your freedom to tell a joke that's yeah. not... It's it's just... A, you literally say in the thing it's a joke. Yeah. And also, you're making a joke about the past players. And yeah. you say you're not going to do that. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a joke. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like I said, 2021. Yeah. Political correctness gone mad. I kind of want to be, like, a anti-political correctness warrior. Mm. Um, haven't done many interviews since that one. Yeah. Uh, for <laughs> <good reason. laughs> um, yeah. Well, you're on here now, bro. So it's yeah, all good. Yeah, exactly all good. right. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah look, it, I, I get you, from if you're sitting in the NRL's position, I understand where they're coming from because they're going to deal with sponsors and that. Yeah, so you, yeah, you, yeah. you get that, although that it may not be their position, mm. they also do need the money to keep the game running. So yeah. I, I understand that. Like I, I get that. Oh, f look, the sponsors or this isn't happy, mate. Can you please not say that? So I yeah. get that. You know, but in the perfect world, it would be great if everyone could be like, that was clearly a joke. Um, I didn't think it was funny, but it's still a joke. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like if you didn't think it was funny, but mm. it, but he literally says it's a joke straight after it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also if you re in the context of the interview, it's taking the piss out of it. But the good thing is, is like, look, you just got a, a warning, you moved yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I guess like as a professional athlete now, you, it's just learning about being a little bit smarter about Massive. you know yeah, little yeah. things like that. Um, but I, you know, I thought it was funny. Yeah. So I thought it was great. I thought Appreciate it was it. it was entertaining. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, so many yeah. interviews after you, just like mm. you're like, man, same old stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, so this year you get the win last week. What's what's the, you know, what's the kind of goal over the next few weeks for you guys? You finally got Moylan and Johnson on the field. Yep. Um, yeah. What's the goal over the next few weeks for you? Uh, look, it's definitely, we still aspire to play Folders footy, yep. um, 100%. Uh, the Titans was a big one for us. Like, I honestly thought if we lost that game, that was that was going to be it for us. Mm. I really do think that. Um, but we put in the performance we've been looking for for the last, you know, almost whole season, minus the Cowboys game, where we got a good result too. Mm. Um, so now it's just, we've got the Panthers next um, at home uh, wow. after Origin. Yeah, big game for us. So, like, we don't know who's going to back up, but regardless of that, it's more about us. Um, so it's putting in a really good performance against them. Um, the rest of the year, we've sort of eyed out a couple of teams and uh, we think we could have a real crack at it. So it's just maintaining the confidence that we've built over the last two weeks. Mm. Um, it's listening to the coaches, it's executing our game plan um, and it's just playing good competitive footy. That's, mm. that's the rest of the year. Yeah, us. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you're actually, your first try. Walk us through your first try oh, against yeah. the New Zealand Warriors. What was that like? Cracker. <laughs> that was grouse. Um, yeah, I didn't play much footy that game. I think I was like played. The, I think I started that game, played the first twenty, and like the last eight minutes. I barely got on towards the end. 
Um, and I was like meant to be sort of had that drama with going to the Warriors that year as well. Um, yeah, then, so what happened with that? So yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So um, from right from the start, so they approached you. Yeah, they approached me. They approached me around December, November. Oh, maybe even a bit like it was towards the end. I should put it at the start of the next year. The start of 2020 was when they came and approached the start me. Start of so 2020. Start okay. of 2020. Um, so went over and toured their facilities as well. Mm. And New Zealand's a great place. Like it was an unreal place. Um, and it was before I'd played one game of first grade mm. that year. And they were throwing some big money at me that I hadn't seen before going mm. like this. And I was, and I was keen as to go, to yeah. be honest. Um, and then a few things went, went sort of against me. Um, after the, the tour, I'll be honest, I, on the tour I was like, oh, mum and I just getting a free trip. Take with me to New Zealand. Like, how good yeah. is this? Went over there and actually really enjoyed the whole, the whole experience. Um, got to meet some of the lads that were unreal. Mm. I thought, yeah, how good is this? Like, let's live in a different country mm. and do what I love. Yeah. Like, this would be great you know? And then... Um, uh, it was the day before COVID shut the whole game down after round two, mm. 2020. I wasn't sure there was going to be an NRL anymore. I wasn't sure about like, anything. So. Well, they were, yeah, they were literally saying that the game could be shut down. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. For 12 months. So I signed the deal that day just because that was the only offer I had on the table. The Sharks hadn't given me anything yet. Mm. Um, I was like, Keenan, how good is this? Like, this is unreal. Mm. Uh, then um, my brother moved to Bali uh, during that time, like a bit before. And I realised if I went, there was going to be mum by herself here. Mm. And mum's like fine by herself, but I just, you know, want to sort of... She's got family. Around. Exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and then also on top of that, my grandmother started getting sick as well. Yeah. So I was like, like it, it sort of just started to unravel with those two things happening. And then like, COVID hit as well. And then COVID hit. And then COVID is just sort of like the icing on, on top, really. Um, if I do go, I won't be around here for Omar. I won't be around here for mum. Um, so I just sort of gave him a call and just like sort of said, like, what's going on? I was like, like I, need, I just wanted to stay, and they're like, no, you're not. I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> and like, no, you're not. And that was back and forth for like half an hour until like, they were really good about it all. They really were like, yeah. um, so, I mean, they, they got to stand firm initially because they might be like, look, he's just got jitters. Exactly, yeah. You know, yeah, he's yeah, just yeah, a bit yeah. worried. Yeah, for sure. Um, but then I'm sure once they heard, you know, the, the reasoning, fact, the yeah. reasoning. Mm. Um, and so what eventually they're like, look, mate, it sucks, but we understand. Yeah, yeah, it was just sort of, because uh, I only signed a, a great terms in some actual contract. Yeah. And um, yeah, by the end, they were like, they understood and they were really good about it. And um, uh, Peter O'Sullivan was the recruitment guy there. I had a chat to him like a few weeks ago and we're all good. So yeah, yeah. yeah it was and so how, so you signed, how long after you signed did you give them a call to say, look, I fucking... Well, there was about an eight week mid-COVID break. Mm. Um, geez, I, probably like towards the end of that break, like eight weeks later, mm. um, when I realised that Josh wasn't coming back for it. My brother wasn't coming back for a while. Mm. And that I needed to be here for the fam and stuff. So it was a, it was a decent little mm. wait. Yeah, between, yeah. yeah. It's um, I mean, at least you, at least they've got that time to like you know go into the market again because yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the season was shut down. Yeah. And it's one of those situations where you've just got to make the tough call. Like, yeah. what would you rather yeah. be stuck in New Zealand? I mean, you did, like, we didn't even know back then. You know nah, what I mean? We, nah, we did, nah, nah. We, they're still moved to Australia, yeah, but back yeah, then, yeah. like, there's players yeah. going home. So yeah. it's just one of those tough situations. Fair play to the Warriors though for you know yeah, eventually. Yeah, they, like and like I said, I could have been. Really, really difficult about it all, but they they fully understood and just let me go, and yep. yeah, it worked out well in the end. And so, so is the goal for the next, you know, is the goal to play Origin, and is the goal to obviously you're a Blues, yeah, Blues man. Yeah, 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 what do you think about the? Um, actually, yeah, here's a good. I forgot to ask you. So obviously, with the recent crackdown with head highs, you're you're an aggressive tackler, an aggressive mm. player, and you're in the middle getting through a bunch of work. Mm. Um, what's it been like on the field for you? You know, uh, for me, I sort of just. I'm lucky, I don't know if I'm lucky, if it's a technique thing or if it's just the way I've always tackled. I don't really like leave a sort of stray arm. I sort of always tend to hit in the midsection. Um, so it's not, it hasn't been too much of a focus for me. Mm. Uh, I, I don't agree with it though. Like it's every single sort of like head high that comes about it is accidental. Like no one means to whack someone like that. It's, it's not like the 1980s anymore. You can't do it anymore. We mm. all know that. And um, yeah, on the field, it hasn't really sort of played into my game too much. Mm. I know some boys have been speaking about it. Mm. Uh, like Aaron Woods, for instance, like he's uh, one for leaving an occasional arm out, mm. and he had to really sort of like under fatigue as well, just make sure that he hones mm. that in. Um, but yeah, it's it's been as a general feeling, been like we just wish we had a bit of time to adjust. The general feeling is we wish we'd been spoken to first as yeah. a players' union. Like that, mm. that, that, that's the main thing. Like is mm. they, they changed the rules. I think it was um, first about the scrums and about um, there was a scrum rule. There was a knock on rule like to get rid of the scrums blah blah um and we weren't told about that we mm. weren't told about even the six against like that was that was one like we didn't really get told about it. it just happened yeah okay so just these rules keep changing and we're not really like uh 
brought into the conversation, mm. which is a bit a bit a bit frustrating. Yeah, um, and it's 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 frustrating because like you're getting you know some in the media are uh, choosing to paint you negatively when literally all you're saying is like look can we just talk about it yeah, first yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all we're asking we're yes. not asking to run the game we're not asking to talk about anything outside of that we're just yeah. talking about if it affects the game can we Has have a input? chat yeah yeah um yeah because I, I look i totally agree that you know in a perfect world it'd be great if we had no head highs like yeah. i think every player agrees with that we're sure. the one we're the ones Top it's up. our body <laughs> yeah, yeah, um yeah. but i just the so the intentions is great and it's and I think it's really good that we're going down this path but I just think that it would have been much better to sit down and work out a plan with the players you know go through everything with them and show them you know this is what's happening this is the the data that we have when it comes to head highs and blah 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 yeah and work out an agreement of the best way to attack it yeah, yeah instead of just a penalty a thon send me a thon like I'm yeah. sure if mine's greater than mine came together it, there could have been a better outcome than this absolutely or even even just like if you come to it at the start of pre-season you go boys this is what's happening some mm -hmm. input blah 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 mm -hmm. and then go you've got 12 weeks to change the technique or a little bit just bring everything down a bit or the you know the the arm mm. um and also we will reward legs tackles and we will you know what yeah. i mean like all of these Unreal. little things that yeah, just yeah. help a bit yeah yeah um but yeah here's what it is okay so but the goal is long term to play for new south wales in australia 100 percent. like that's the goal's always been to yep. um put this global jersey on it but at some stage look maybe i never will and i'm mm. just talking at my ass right now yeah. but like, you know i'd love to do, be able to do that like if you don't have that goal like what, yeah. are you, what are you doing yeah for sure um the goal is also to win a grand final in the next few years as well um, yeah i've won a couple of reserve grade ones the res a real one might be a bit nicer yeah nice club church <laughs> <you know. laughs> could you imagine if you actually won the oh, club no, church it'd be nice, it'd be crazy <laughs> oh fuck. It'd be crazy but, um and so what do you reckon of new south like the selections and new south wales chances do you what do you think that new south wales have a good chance to win it or do you think you know queensland's you know what i mean what's your thoughts on I, look, I, I said clean sweep last year i said there's no chance they win one game <laughs> yeah and you just fuck it <laughs> and i don't know how but you did so look i'm i'm thinking this year honestly like they got a gun ho side i think it you know i hope i'm hoping for another three i'm hoping for three nil um, Could you imagine that would be folklore? Oh, Three nil nuts, up in nuts. Townsville exactly, and then Suncorp. Exactly, exactly. So, hey, look at you know, Origin. You don't know. Yeah, we thought we knew last year. Yeah, we didn't know. Yeah, we don't know. You, so. know, you honestly, that is the one thing with Origin. You really you just don't never know. know. You yeah. don't know unless you were like at the eight-year Queensland dominance. You kind of knew we we were in for a. Do a yeah. tough run. Yeah, because we had like a million immortals <laughs> in our side. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, will never yeah. happen again. I don't reckon. Nah, not not for our lifetime. Was anything. Who's who's the best player? or the most influential player you've ever played with and that can be two separate people okay um i think that's a tough question i didn't play with him uh, i trained with him but sam burgess he was and everyone says that yeah yeah it's him it's, it's him he's the yeah. most influential player for sure like the, the timing to put a big hit on to do a quick offload to just change the game like he's mm. just in my opinion, he's the best forward to play the game. In, really, I really do think that. Yeah, yeah like, okay. I don't think a fair statement. I don't think there's two players that had the talent. He had both sides of the ball, mm. with the whack and the ball, and the, like, True. the hands and the, yeah. the skill. Um, so yeah, it'd be it'd have to be him. I think. Yeah, mm. he's he's just a beast. The, everyone that's different. played with him is like his mental toughness. Yeah. is he is ruthless. Yeah, he's. Just, I just don't. I don't know how he just. Like, I don't know how he does the things he does. I really don't. Yeah. Um, but just to even learn from him, like I've said before about Gal, like I, I'm still good friends with Sam, and every now and again give him a call, see how he's going, and like just put questions to him. Like he's really helped me out with my career over the years, even with um, contract talks and uh, how to keep it all out of your head, and just like, like his his mental, like his mindset towards everything is is something that like you just need to tap into because it's just unreal to hear it. Yep. Um, and who's the most skillful player, or like uh, maybe an outside back or a half, where you've just that you've played against over the last few years, where it's just fuck this guy is unbelievable played against yeah uh, i think nathan cleary at the moment yeah yeah uh like he's, he's inventing new ways to pass the ball mm. like it, that was crazy that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, no one's done good. it before like, yeah yeah um Lewis, like he's a weapon too at the moment he's going good uh, what's it like playing a team like penrith what is it when you're on there what what is it that they do that is so hard to counter do you think oh, my, like I, I can't i don't know like yeah. it, again if i knew i'd stop it yeah, yeah i don't know uh like watching them play it's just everything seems to go their way just like they throw an offload it sits in someone's chest they bump yep. someone off there's someone right next to them so you can just tell they're playing for each other more than anyone else's i think yeah, but so how to true. quantify that yeah i don't know um ask all the boys his favorite rapper of all time mm. Mm. 
I can sing the entire first verse of Fuck the Police. So, <laughs> anyway, so, so like, NWA somewhere. then? Yeah, yeah, probably be up there. Okay. Eminem's all right too. Mate, he's a gun. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie of all time? Lion King. Lion King. Lion King. The original, obviously. Fucking the new one sucked. Mate. So bad. Shit, I didn't even get through it. No, I, I literally nearly went out of, out of cinema. It was so bad. Mate. Couldn't handle it. The fact they could destroy our childhood like that. I they should so be fucking... I was so off it. Mate, yeah. put them in prison. 100%. Um, in 12 months, if everything happens perfectly, what happens and where are you? Oof. Everything happens perfectly and the Perfect. way I wanted to, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in Blues Camp. Blues Camp yeah. and a premiership at the end of it. Wouldn't be too bad either. Nice ring on my finger. <laughs> and a clivey. And a clivey around my tomorrow neck. Yeah, for sure. Mate, thank you so much for coming on, brother. And I can't wait to see you. Um, hopefully you make the blues and can't wait to see you boys come together. I think Craig Fitzgibbon is going to be massive for you. I really do. Yeah, so do I. I think it's going to be a good year for us, I think. So. Boom. Dunskis. Cheers, lad. Woo.